I think we now move to the first petition by Konstantinos Yanopoulos on a child custody case that we know very well because it's not the first time that you are here. We know the case and I would like now to underline the importance of sticking to the timetable. We have a very heavy afternoon. So first of all, the floor goes to the petitioner for five minutes and then to commission and to members, but pl try as much as possible to be brief. Thank Please, you. the floor is yours. Thank you. It's about child abduction, uh, if I can correct this. It's not about uh, custody. Uh, last time we were arguing whether the issuing of passports of minors without the consent of all those exercising parental responsibility breaches the Brussels II. And the argument of the Commission is that issuing the passport is not a material scope of the regulation. On 21st of October 2015, <coughs> there was issued a decision by the court, number C215 of 2015, which states that the issuing of passport for minors is, is, is within the material scope of regulation, Brussels II, and requires the consent of all those hold, holding parental responsibility. So it's clear <coughs> the rule has been there like uh, since 2005 when it came in force, the Brussels too. Three days later, I contacted Her Majesty Passport Office and I've got a reply that they stand with their decision of May 2015 when they renew the passport, this is a new passport, that I have to bring a court decision to stop processing or issuing passports without uh, my consent, uh, without having my consent, something which is not possible. So, in addition to that, I'd like to <coughs> remind to this Parliament that the regulation number 444-2009, which is about Schengen regulation, Article 1 asks the, uh, the, the regulation, the Commission should present a report which is about harmonizing the rules of children traveling the external borders of the member states for their safety. There is no more need for the Parliament to harmonize the rules. The Court made it clear. No children, no one under 18 can get his own passport without the consent of all those having parental responsibility which probably solved the problem of all the children going to fight in Syria and dying there. Without the consent, of course, all those having parental responsibility. So, <coughs> uh, the issue in the refer of the passports of the two children back in 2010 when they helped them, uh, it helped the mother to, to remove them from the European Union and bring to a third state uh, it was an administrative decision of the national authorities of the UK which transgresses the limits of the rule of law and so it's an illegal decision. So my children's passports are authentic but are illegal. The Brussels II and the Schengen Acquis state that people are traveling on legal travel documents across the member states. So I leave to the Parliament what they want to decide on this issue. The now, there are some criticisms on the COM. I will only bring this uh, question by misreading the ex-Vice President of the COM in a parliamentary question where it says the regulation does not govern the condition under which a passport for a child can be issued, as these are left to the member states. So this is a false statement made to the Parliament and to the citizens of Europe. If the Commission is not sure how to interpret the law, better have some reservations and send the question to the court, not making so firm statements. So, this raises also the question whether we can trust the Commission to, to give uh, reports on petitions by the citizens. <coughs> Regarding the abduction in Cyprus, 
You remember in the last hearing, it was decided that the committee sent letters to the minister together with an extrajudicial document that was attached to my petition and asked to, to reply to some questions. Uh, the minister replied after six months and after a few following up calls from the secretariat and he basically said his office has only executive power and the decision to drop the criminal investigation was made by the Attorney General, who is an independent body. Now, I have to say here, uh, the Attorney General is not representing himself, himself internationally. He's represented by the Ministry of Justice. And maybe he's in, the Attorney General is an independent body within the country, but he's not exogenous to the rule of law, and for sure he's not above to the rule of law, and he has to answer to the questions that the Parliament is addressing to him. So I would like to ask the committee to send again the letter, if they want, they can send directly to the Attorney General, and ask to reply to this extrajudicial document who he that he received in December 2013, it was served legally, and we are still waiting for a reply. Uh, I'd like to ask the investigation to extend it and cover Greece. Uh, but more than a year ago, at the trial for divorce in Athens, there was an issue about jurisdiction, and we will ask to refer a question from a per preliminary ruling to the Court of Justice. The question is whether the regulation must always form the starting point in the search of the applicable rule of jurisdiction, and only when these regulations refer to national rules can these rules be applied, and these rules are not applied independently but as part of the system of regulation. Uh, seems there is some political intervention there, and the decision after 15 months is still not been issued, neither the question is referred to the Court of Justice. So please, for the proper administration of justice, either issue a decision or send this question to the Court of Justice, because it has parallel implications in the case of custody. It can stay there for 10 years or more, but we want this to go ahead. We want a decision on both cases. You cannot delay the decision because a politician there, a minister, he doesn't like this question. And I'm sure many others in the Commission that don't like this question. But it has to be answered. Okay. Now, the current situation is the matter is at the Eurojust. The children left a UA in the summer, they were missing, they were reported in the SIS2 system, they are details, they are, they are located in Hungary, the police located them, I travel, I met them, they cannot exit the Schengen, they are on temporary basis which has been expired, they stay there more than three months, and they stay on passports which as I say they have not been issued legally, and we refer the question to Eurojust. I'd like to, to the Eurojust to coordinate with the member states involved, and also if there is no agreement between the member states, they have a legal uh, services which can provide an opinion. So I would like this parliament to, to write to Eurojust to ask to be open to any uh, any sides of the case and to uh, decide according to the rule of law. Uh, further, last one, there was a question last year, there was a letter last year to the UAE. Uh, it took some time the, um, to reach the, the, the embassy and to have a feedback. Only last October we had a feedback. So I want to keep this possibility open, this diplomatic dialogue, because there is a strong possibility that the mother will go back to the UAE since she has no job in Hungary where she lives and she depends on her business which other people are running in the UAE. So I like to, to have a diplomatic dialogue with them to find all the ways to, to have a political diplomatic solution to that. Uh, that is all. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And now I extend the floor to, to the Commission representative, Mr. Gruby Sitch. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for the floor. And thank you to the petitioner for pointing out all of these things so that we can discuss them today and, and hopefully clarify them. Uh, first, as the petitioner has pointed out, a uh, decision of the European Court of Justice, C215, of 2015 pertaining to the consent of the parents to have a passport issued to a minor child. Uh, I would have to disagree uh, with the petitioner. Uh, the official position of the Commission is that uh, this decision does not state that it always needs to be the two parents to grant consent for a, the passport to be issued to a minor child. Uh, in order to clarify this, I hope you will uh, allow me to delve a bit into the text of the decision because in point 15, in paragraph 15 of the decision, the court clearly starts from the pre, uh, first supposition that under Bulgarian law, decisions on travel by a minor child and obtaining a passport in the child's name are to be taken by common agreement of the parents. So while it is true that the decision does state that it's the two decisions, of the, that it's the consent of the two parents which is needed for the issuing of a passport, it only states so because the perquisite under Bulgarian law is that the consent of two parents is needed. As the, commission, as the petitioner himself has stated now, uh, the authorities of the United Kingdom have stated that it's their national law that only the consent of one parent is required. Considering this and considering that uh, the decision that uh, the petitioner quotes can only be applied if the national law of a member state uh, supposes that, uh, the, uh, that the agreement of both parents is needed, then the decision can be applied to a case as, as a law, but not to the case of UA where only the, the agreement of one parent is needed. Uh, considering this, uh, the Commission's position is that uh, this decision, the case law that the petitioner presents, is not relevant to this case and stands by its assessment of the case. Uh, cons considering the points made on uh, Cypriot law and on the procedure uh, which is uh, underway in Greece, the Commission has already uh, studied this, uh, these points. The Commission has already reached an opinion on these points, and we stay by that opinion, which is that no EU law is applied here uh, in the sense in which the petitioner invokes, and that no intervention on the Commission's side is possible. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, and I'm happy to invite colleagues to participate in this debate. Uh, first is Eleonora Ebi. Grazie, Presidente. Io... Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. Obviously, we need to look at this in a different light. I mean, I've got the ruling handed down by the Court of Justice here, and in the final part, the court says the uh, action in which one of the uh, – could you slow down, please? Eleonora, <laughs> could you start maybe all over again because it was not clear? Okay. Yeah, Slower yeah. so that translators have a chance to interpret. In any case, in the final part of, this, of the ruling, the court declares or states that the action in which uh, one of the parents requests the uh, judge to uh, substitute or agree to movements of minors uh, in, from a member state and issue, an issue and a passport is issued in the name of the minor. Uh, falls under Regulation 2201 of 2003, which is Brussels 2. And it seems to me here that often we get lost in legal ramifications and interpretations. And in this case, what we need to do is 
look uh, at getting a more in-depth response from the Commission because I'm not satisfied with what I've heard from them. I'd also like to go back to the uh, words that the petitioner used in his slides. His children have authentic but illegal passports. And I think that summarizes very well the situation in which so many families find themselves now. They're faced with uncertainty and, uh, and, and contradictions uh, with uh, community and national legislation. So we need to try and clarify things. And something that uh, the petitioner has put forward as a proposal is to request of Cyprus a clear, precise response without uh, hiding behind uh, legal formalities and thus assuming responsibility for its own actions is something that uh, we could do. We could request of the Cyprus authorities a clearer explanation so that we could follow up on what's going on and this situation that has lasted now for far too long. M moreover, the uh, commissioners, or the petitioners rather, request uh, concerning uh, the relations with the uh, UAE is something that um, needs to be taken into account and uh, I think we should support the petitioner on that. So in my opinion the petition should remain open because there are far too many problems here which uh, continually occur with the implementation of community law and community rules in the ways that uh, these are applied in different member states. Mrs. Danoka, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. First of all, I want to thank uh, Petitioner on his insistence in this case because we, through these concrete cases, we as uh, legislators and, and members of the European Parliament can understand where is the failure in, in uh, our laws and in particular in Brussels II regulation and we know that we are now in a position to influence uh, its uh, um, uh, process of amendment of, of this Brussels II and uh, we will take into account uh, what the problem which, which is in your particular case. And uh, I, I find it also related to the absence of a statement of European citizenship. Yeah, we, some, I guess two years ago, we, we had even a year of European citizenship and we prepared here in the Committee of Petitions a report on this. But unfortunately, uh, it was all our, uh, when we speak about European citizenship, all, only problem is tackled normally is just free movement and the exercise of free movement. But we don't speak on the idea of uh, European citizenship as uh, something which can have uh, added value to the citizenship of, of some country, and if it would be the case, we could speak about these differentiations in the laws. You see, in Bulgaria, you need uh, agreement of both parents. In the United Kingdom, not. I don't know the legislation of Cyprus. Maybe I have missed the Greece, same. Greece. <laughs> So both parents need it. Great. Yeah, so these cross-border cases, uh, in these cross-border ca cases, we would like to have some harmonized legislation on, on, on citizenship of children. And if it would be, then we, we uh, that I think is, is a uh, di dimension in which we can try to work out some some new 
ideas for, for European citizenship. Second point, for United Arab Emirates, I was also a reporter on changing regulation, providing citizens of Emirates free, free visa regime. In Libya it was uh, in, previous, in previous legislation. And when, when granting free visa regime, we of course could also ask better cooperation between this, this country. And, and so here we have also the room to, to influence the uh, situation. But I think I agree to uh, arguments of Eleonora Evi that the Commission reply is not exhausted, and, and I would propose also to keep this petition open and to ask uh, more deep uh, evaluation of the case. Thank you. Mr. Marias. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, the petitioner presented his case extensively and his personal drama, I would say, because he, he is away from his children. He cannot see his children. This is a moral, emotional issue but also it concerns the responsibilities and the competence of the European Union because the uh, petitioner is um, a citizen of the European Union and we should see things from another angle as well. What's the interest, the children's interest, and especially of minors? Because these minors have uh, the European citizenship. So as we said before, European citizenship is the core, is the basis on which we can be uh, supported, we can be based to see what happens with some issues of family law, because family law itself does not uh, belong to the competence of the European Union, but in the competence of the member states. However, from the moment that we have European citizenship, we should see whether uh, some parts of civil law or family law influence the rights of those who have European citizenship, either the parents or the children. Consequently, I feel that this is the core of the matter that could help us in this case, but also in other cases we examine. I don't think that the reply of the Commission is satisfactory, and I think that my colleagues mentioned this as well. We have two, three points that we could raise. The first one, it's given that Eurojust has been involved. So this is serious. We, as a committee, we could, first of all, keep uh, this case open. We could request more information to be given by Eurojust and the intervention of Eurojust in this case uh, of a complaint deposited and all the legal procedures have begun through the uh, relevant authorities of the member states and the whole point has been raised in Eurojust. So we, we move in this direction. Second, another point. We could send a letter to uh, the me uh, permanent representation of Hungary because there are some points concerning what will happen with these children, with their fate, will they have a, a residence permit, can they have a residence permit, the points raised <laughs> by the petitioner, the um, participation of Eurojust. This is something that concerns Hungary, and I think that Hungary should be informed, and we should have also the opinion of Hungary. The third point I would like to raise, we should have a better reply from the uh, Cypriot authority. I understand that the Cypriot authorities consider that the whole issue is uh, concerns the court only, and they say, as a country, we cannot intervene, but I think we could keep a contact with the uh, Cypriot side to see how the whole case develops. Fourth, fourth point, I'm certain that in, in the Arab Emirates, the United Arab Emirates, we, could, we can't have a grey zone when, uh, where the law is not implemented and people go there and they vanish. There is a possibility, uh, Madam uh, Chairman, uh, we could send a letter to the United Arab Emirates in closing. I consider that the case should uh, be maintained open. We should send these letters and we should try um, to resolve a case not for the interest of the petitioner or of his spouse, 
but we should try and protect the interest of the children because we have a unilateral act, act of one parent as this parent uh, assesses it they interpret in their own way the children's interest. This is uh, subjective. We, uh, we need to find the objective interest of the children. We have many uh, legal facets to be examined, and it's not easy to examine them. However, from our point of view, we could do these five steps, and I see that my colleagues agree on, on this, and they mentioned this before. In this way, we can exert some pressure in order to have a positive development in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Curtin Darling. Thanks very much, uh, Chair. Um, I don't want to uh, take any more time uh, than is necessary. All I wanted uh, to say is that I think sometimes um, in very cold terms uh, and in, in legal terms, probably there's a lot of truth in what the Commission has come back with in a very uh, clear technical analysis of, of the limits of the law. But on the other hand, uh, sometimes uh, human lives and the way that uh, the free movement of people works and, and the, the reality of, um, of inter international relationships doesn't match that very cold reading of the way that our um, free movement is legislated. And this seems to be one of the cases where the reality and, and the legislation hit. Um, and therefore, I'd, I'd fully support um, the ideas put forward by Eleanor Evie right at the beginning. I think we should keep the case open. I think we should ask for some more information and we could um, uh, take a number of actions in terms of writing to some of the, the key governments involved. Um, I think it would be um, really appropriate that we add uh, these cases also to the discussions inside the working group on, on child protection as we, as we go on. We know we're going to have an oral question um, around Brussels too. This will add another element to that discussion um, around uh, ch child protection and Brussels too. And, and I think it would be wrong to close the, the petition at this stage before we've had that full discussion um, in the plenary and, and around the Brussels too regulation. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Pitera. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a case that has been examined several times, and in the present legal situation, there isn't much to be done. The works on Brussels too is pen are pending. Two detailed things. Issuing of national documents well, this is within the scope of national competences, and I doubt that member states will ever agree that uh, such documents should be issued on the basis of international provisions. But as far as a consent uh, to the children's travel, in some countries, two parents have to give their consent, and in others, one parent is enough. I guess it's because different philosophies uh, perhaps are part of the culture of the countries. In the countries where the consent of two parents uh, is necessary, it happens that one parent will block the decision and uh, will make it impossible uh, for children to leave. And I guess very soon in the Parliament we will have a petition why mm, a parent with a child uh, is not permitted to carry out their career because another parent is blocking that possibility for them. And I would like to ask what we can achieve while leaving this petition open. I'm only afraid that it will appease our conscience. The politicians give hope to people that they may be able to help, but deep inside we all know that we cannot do much. So let us be honest. Can we really help in this case with the present legal situation? Thank you. 
If you allow me, I would also like to, to raise a point. Of course, harmonization, as Mrs. Danoka has pointed out, is on the wish list of every European federalist. But we are unfortunately not there. And in my view, unfortunately, having said that and clarify that, uh, the issuing of, of passports falls under the scope of subsidiarity. Uh, in other words, the national competences. There is not much more we can do about it rather than to campaign for, for more federalism in this respect. That is not very useful at, the, at this moment for the petitioner and for the children. So I would like to ask you, because you are going to have the floor within just a few moments, um, have there been any, let's say, non-judiciary uh, attempts to, to resolve the problem? In certain member states, they offer mediation between the two parents that cannot actually speak to each other, that cannot come to an agreement on, on, on the custody of the children. Has there been any attempts of, of, of counseling between the two parents? And I refer back to what Ms. Mr. Maria said, said, because what is, what is really the core of this committee is the best interest of the child. And what we can agree on, all of us, is that the best interest of a child is to have a good relation to both parents when there are two parents. In certain cases, tragically, a child only has one parent, and then we have to, to, to encourage that parenthood as much as we can. But, but when there are two parents, they should, in the best interest of the child, try to overcome their personal, let's say, vendetta that is going on, sometimes for a very, very long time. I myself, many years ago, before becoming a politician, I conducted this type of mediation sessions and counseling sessions. And it would be useful to know whether if this has been something that you have tried, I'm not, I'm not demanding an answer, but it would be interesting for colleagues to know whether if this is something that has been tried. Uh, yes. yes, it was tried uh, 2011 with a mediator of the parliament for uh, parental child abduction, but there was a, cross, a red line which was crossing the rule of law. The, my estranged wife was asking to recognize a divorce and de facto without custody decision of the UAE courts, which three months earlier the Greek court has thrown out because it breaches the human rights. So if we want any, uh, any solution, any friendly solution, it has to be within the line set by the rule of the law. Second, I'm not asking this parliament to try this case. This is up to the courts. I'm asking to uh, ask the member states to effectively implement the rule of law. And finally, to explain about this decision on the passports, as you say, is to the national members, is to the member states and their authorities to issue travel documents. But the regulation, the Brussels II, it has been in place since 2005 and it has been signed by all the member states but Denmark. So all the member states, they agree on the terms of the regulation and the regulation make it clear. If you have parental responsibility, you take care, sorry, you make critical decisions as to where this child will study, to which school you will go to, which country will live, and so on. So if there is no agreement between the parents, then the court can decide the court of the member state that has international jurisdiction. So that's what the decision says, <coughs> which I, I agree with me, say, with Dr. Leonora Evi. Uh, since there is so much uh, differences with the views of the Commission, it must be a proper analysis, must be done a proper analysis of this uh, decision to really understand what it says there. Thank you.
This is not a very simple case to summarize. I wish it would be, but it is not. And it, you know, it's also, it has a human dimension that we are at a certain point. I'm happy that one or two of the colleagues actually brought about that aspect. We are talking about children. And they are 12 and 15 at the time, if I'm not, if I'm not misled. 11 and 15. Huh? They are still children, young children. They would, they are in a sensible, sensitive age where they would need both their parents. So again, I would, I would urge you to try to look at what can be done. And I would urge you to come back maybe to the Secretariat because I know that you have established long and lasting relationship to the Secretariat on this. To explain if you have tried to reach out in the interest of your children not to maintain this personal vendetta with your ex-wife, but actually to try to find a solution for the best interest of the, of the kids. I, I cannot underline that we have, I have seen, I have heard, I have experienced cases that goes beyond what you have described for us. And still there could be a non-judicial remedy even in those cases. Uh, you don't need to take the floor. Let me just explain that I'm using my privilege as chair at this moment. And then what we do, colleagues, one, I think, has said that there is not much more we can do in this case. I tend to agree. But nevertheless, colleagues have expressed their willingness to pursue this case, to look into it from different angles. I have to take that into deep consideration, but I want to underline and I want everybody to take note of the fact that we cannot give you, Mr. Yanopoulos, any false expectations. This is, legally speaking, a case where we cannot give you false expectations. Having said that, it will, it's now up to you to try the non-judicial remedies and possible ways forward, and it's up to us to do what colleagues have asked us to do as committee namely the following, to, to uh, write to Eurojust and have a written piece of information on what has been done and a possible way forward. A written analysis, even though I must say the analysis from the European Commission was a very good one, explaining and stating the facts and, and the, the, the factual situation, but it would be good to have your, your analysis also in, in writing so that we can go back to it and actually also refer to it. Furthermore, we'll send a letter to the Cypriot Attorney General and to the permanent representation of, of, of Cyprus and the permanent representation of Hungary. And, and Last but not least, since we have established a working group on child welfare issues, Mrs. Chairperson, Mrs. Evi, I'm delighted to refer this case to you and to your working group. So take, take it, uh, the ball is, is uh, you know, is, is been thrown to, to the working group and do what you possibly can to examine this from yet another angle. So is, can, I, can I ask colleagues if you agree to what I have just proposed? Thank you very much. And since I gave you the floor earlier, I don't think you need to have it back. Thank you very much. And thank you for to move on like this. And uh, thank you very much. I'd like to... Uh, Thank you, and I wish you every success. And maybe in. So, I wish you good luck, and maybe we'll see what happens next year.